Welcome to the MinMaxed Podcast, a place for adventurers and friends. We want to thank you as you join us as we continue into our adventures into the Fall of Plague Stone and Pathfinder 2nd Edition. A recap of Session 2. We get to town from a wagon train and go into a tavern. We meet a barkeep named Delma Fulst. There is a patron who is quite rude to a server and Miklik. No one takes too kindly to this. Some more people pour in. We have dinner with Bort who tells many a tall tale, though also gives convenient opportunities for character exposition. Then a bar brawl breaks out. Miklik gets stuck in with enthusiasm. Vorn gets a little carried away and electrocutes some motherfuckers. Daru looks menacing and protects the frightened Plum. In an attempt to save farmer lives, Plum puts grease on Vorn's chair. The half-orc slides to the ground. From there, in an attempt to prolong the brawl, Vorn heals everyone in the room. The Turnip King enters and spoils everyone's fun. Bort, really going to town on the turnip dessert, starts choking and fucking dies. Daru makes a check and believes the cause to be poison. Dun dun dun. So mysterious and dark and insidious. So, yes, yes. In fact, last session, if I remember correctly, we left off with uh, uh, exquisitely mutton-chopped Rolf. Rolf. The, the, uh, the turnip king. The turnip king, that's right. I forgot that's what you guys decided to call him. I Go named ahead. him. That was my name. <laughs> so, yes, congratulations. Good job. Yes, yes. This is uh, Rolf Garley. It, what, what he does right away is, uh, ju- as, as he recognizes what's going on, he kind of stands up and he looks at you and he points, he points at each of you in turn, points back at the, to the back of the tavern. Oi, goblin, get over here. Okay. Twins, get over here. And the twins kind of stand up. Uh, when the twins look and they see Borgith's body, which is turning a very light shade of blue, right now <laughs> one of them gasps <gasps> oh Bort oh no Bort oh Bort he starts crying his brother has consoled him you don't know whether it's Ulf or Ulf that's crying but he looks really broken up about it Rolf the town sheriff fingers each of you and says to the stable yards now Fingers each of us? <laughs> yep, he just has to say poor choice of words. Are we, are we just gonna let that roll? That's yeah. <laughs> and Swanee looked at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you looked at each other through your webcams? We felt uh, it. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we we had a moment. We connected. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. Rolf points to each of you in turn and says, To the stables now. Uh I go to the stables. He stalks off. Is someone gonna wake me up? Uh, I'll kick you, maybe? Rolf definitely will. He starts kicking you as he goes by. Hey, get up! Get up, half orc. Get up! What can I roll though? I have to do to wake up? You don't need to roll. Uh, <laughs> when being kicked, you probably don't need to roll to wake up. Boot in the stomach. That's an automatic wake. Yeah. Mick like, will like, grab your arm and just like start dragging you. Eh, he gets an 11 to drag you. The pro- athletics? probably works. If it's athletics, 14. I just did a strength check. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> And uh, Vorn, you're being dragged. You don't really know. You just kind of like are watching the ceiling pass by you. Oh, you're you think floating. it's an out of you think it's an out of body experience. <laughs> Reaching towards the sky. <laughs> so you guys get out to out to the stables. As you're leaving, uh, you, there there are people who are kind of like getting up, and the uh, the proprietor Delma she starts. Uh, Rushing people out the door. Go, go home. Go home. Get out of here tonight. Go, get. And she starts, uh, you see her walk over to uh, um, the server who got knocked out by Farmer Ellum earlier. If you remember that, the guy who uh, who got knocked out, bumped into Farmer Ellum and uh, started the brawl. Uh, she goes to wake him up as you go out to the to the stables. When he goes out there, he gets you all in a circle. Here he comes goes, the fingering again. <laughs> he goes, you... He points to Miklik. Me, Miklik? Who are you? You started the fight. Tell me what you were doing from the moment you got to town to now. Walk to bar? Drink? Eat? He looks... "Mm." You, halfling? Well, after we pulled the coaches into the stables and uh, had a word with the stable girl, I guess it was, 
we went into the bar and we had some conversation. Uh, Bort dominated that conversation, I must say. Uh, we had some terrible turnip ale. Uh, no offense, turnip king. And then we had turnip some king. reasonable... Uh, don't worry. Then we had some reasonable, reasonable food. Um, from there, a fight broke out, and I must say, I, I, Miklik did not start the fight. Uh, it, I, it was it was started by others. Miklik simply joined in, as did uh, the half orc as much as he could in his inebriated state. Uh, and then afterwards, Bort ate some turnip pudding, and then fucking died. I see. You know, I, I must say, I don't feel as though we should be the only sub suspects. Uh, it seemed as though the kitchen cook did not take too kindly to Bort's criticisms of her food, and she would have been the one making the food, I do believe. Well, she's in town. She's not going to be leaving anytime soon. You all might could leave anytime you want. But no, nope. I am not letting you leave town. Bort dead. No caravan. No, no one from the caravan leaves town until we find out what happened. I think what my friend Miklik is saying is that without Bort, the caravan's probably not gone anywhere. All I do is break up bar fights. How do you know Bort? Bort was the leader of the caravan. I think all of us hitched a ride on it for one reason or another. So you don't work with the caravan? Only in a nominal capacity. He offered us a cheaper passage if we were to help Protect the caravan from certain dangers, as each of us are those with certain capacities. So you aren't actually employed by Bort? No, simply a reduced fare for services rendered. I see. And he turns to look at the twins. And you? And one of them's still sobbing in his eyes. <laughs> and uh, he goes, we're teamsters. We're teamsters for Bort. We're teamsters for Bort. And he, uh, Rolf, Rolf looks at him and he says, And what were you doing before the bar fight? Dicing and drinking with Alam, that's all. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Why would you passengers kill the, the, the person who's leading the, the train to your destination? These two are completely broken up about it and have good alibis. Oh, this is way beyond me. Look, I'm gonna have to wait for the court judge. Lord Cranberry is gonna have to look into this. I, I don't. I don't have any. I don't have any experience with this at all. Wait, wait. The the court judge is named Lord Cranberry. Yeah, yeah. L L Lord Mubbage Cranberry. Yes. All right then. Turn up, King. Come, come on now. I'm a little stressed out right now. And, and how long will it take for Cranberry to uh, come investigate this matter so we can be on our way? Uh, so it, Lord Cranberry makes his way here every couple of months. He had his last visit about three weeks ago. But you're all going to have to stay until we get this figured out. Or until the court judge arrives. Oh my. Who leads the caravan? Or, damn it. Who, who after Bort, leaves the caravan? Uh, V-Lips. I can't remember her name. Oh, and the half-orc, right? Yeah, the half-orc. Ulf. Grint. Uh, one, of the, one of the twins... Wiping the tears from his eyes. Tramley. Tramley is the second in command. And uh, Rolf looks at him and goes, Can you can you go get Tamley for me? So that I can have her tell the caravan that they're not going anywhere until this gets resolved. And he, he says, yes, right away, right away, right away. And he the, the twins go off. One of them is consoling the other, holding him around the shoulders. And that leaves you with Rolf. Sorry that... You're getting mixed up in this, being that you were just passengers, but I just can't let you leave. Well, is there anything we could do to speed up the process? Well, if we were able to find out who killed Bort, then we wouldn't need to wait for the court judge. I certainly have no experience with this. The most I do is deal with land disputes and, and, and the weekly bar fight. I... I I don't, I'm not an investigator. Is there still no. pudding left there? There's still pudding left. Oh, I don't know. Is it still in front of Bort? Uh, you don't know. Right now. I'm standing right there, ain't I? No, you guys went out to the stable. Oh. You yeah. took all of the caravan members that were in the bar out to the stable. Crime scene has been compromised. Good job, Sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, on the sea, when crimes are committed, you must make do with what authority you've got. I will help investigate this if it means we can be on our way sooner. Well, if you're willing to, I can't like deputize you or anything. I can't give you anything for it. But you would be able to leave town sooner if you were able to find out what happened. I feel as though the security forces of this town could not actually keep us from leaving, but I'm not playing an evil character. <laughs> Party, I want to get an idea. I want to talk a little bit about how, how everybody's feeling right now. Vorn, you're still laying on the on your back, right? Yes. Plum, Plum, what are you? What, what what's Plum thinking right now? I think it's the cook. He insulted her meal, and she knew immediately and was very angry about it. Okay. Okay. How does Plum? How does Plum feel about the situation? I are mean, you just, are you just your mind is going right into investigator mode? Uh, out of necessity. I mean, I don't really care too much about Bort. He was kind of a kind of an annoying guy, actually. But whatever. I don't want to be stuck here forever. How about you, Micklick? What's Micklick thinking right now? Yeah, Micklick is uh, kind of disappointed. I mean, a death always kind of spoils a good bar fight. <laughs> um, That's true. He doesn't know. He doesn't really understand what Rolf is getting at about not, not being able to leave. No, you guys, Micklick, Micklick just can't uh, rasp. Yeah, like you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't tell me not to leave. I can yeah, leave whatever like, I want. If I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> All right, gotcha, gotcha. How about Daru? How's Daru feeling about this whole thing? Um, I would definitely want to try to figure out what happened because, well, obviously, the faster we do it, the faster we can leave, but. Murder's no good. Ain't no good, son. All right. So with that, Rolf is kind of Rolf is kind of just he looks really overwhelmed right now. Like he's never had to deal with anything like this before. So he's got his head in his hand and he's pacing. Uh, what do you all do right now? Uh, I feel like Daru had an excellent idea to investigate the porridge. I think if we can, let's go take a look at the bowl of porridge that Bort was eating from. And also the larger, like, whatever pot of porridge that Bort's portion came from. And see if we can figure out if that's poison, too. Or yeah, if see if it's all poisoned or just what was supposed to go to Bort. Exactly. If, if it's just, like, bad turnips and that's their poison, I'm going to be a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is turnips. Spencer. Everything is turnip-based. Congratulations, you solved the mystery. <laughs> it's turnip poison. It's turnips poisoning. Game over. We um, win. So, yeah, what do you guys end up doing? Yeah, let's do that. Back let's... to the bar. So yep. you guys walk back into the into the tavern. Uh, when you get back in there, there's there's no nobody else is really there. Um, all the patrons went home, obviously. Um, Bort's body isn't there anymore either. And you can see um, you can see the proprietor, Delma. She's uh, pacing right now. Delma, we'd like to do some investigation to try and solve this murder. Um, King Turnip, uh, Rolf, has said we can't leave until everything is sorted out. Mind if we take a look around? Oh, oh, good, oh, goodness. You scared me. Oh, no, it's so on edge. I never Diplomacy. had anything like this happen before. I get a 20 diplomacy check to try and comfort her nerves and make it seem like everything's going to be okay. Plum Partiger is on the case. Oh, thank you, Plum. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm feeling much better now. Where, dead man? Oh, we moved him to the cellar. It's colder down there. It'll preserve the body a bit more until we can decide what to do. Delma's smarter than Rolf. That's very true. Who can check poisons on this porridge? What's it require? I would assume medicine. The bowl isn't in the dining room. Where has it been moved to? Or at, uh, do we not know? Delma lets you know, oh, we took it back to the kitchen. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know if it was like something that was airborne. I don't want any of my patrons to die. One already has. Yeah, any more. Any more patrons to die, thank you. Let's, let's go check out this bowl and the porridge. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, I sent, I sent my staff home. I told them not to touch anything before they left. But uh, the kitchen is in the same state it was in <laughs> before the incident. Come, follow me. She leads you all back to the kitchen. She opens the door. Uh, the kitchen uh, contains 
all of the cooking utensils needed to operate the feed mill. There's kettles, skillets, knives, there's a mortar and pestle in here, roasting spits, a sieve, a butter churner. Um, the kettle of turnip porridge is sitting on the counter next to the bowl that was used to serve Bort. Is the, the bowl, bowl still full? Uh, no, there's some traces. Uh, you guys were there when Bort was eating it. He literally inhaled the porridge. Yes, I do recall. He poisoned himself. No, well, that's it. We solved it. Let's go home, boys. Turn up poison. Can I check the, the traces that are left in the bowl to see if it's poison? Go ahead and give me a perception check. Yeah, the closest we have for what I'm seeing is craft with using identify alchemy, uh, maybe, or medicine okay. going backwards with tree poison. But I don't think um, anybody... Is anybody trained in medicine? I am. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So, You're also, are you trained in craft also? I am. But I think you need... Well, I see. Okay. Uh, alchemy is a specialized craft, whereas it I is a, a different specialty. That's what I was looking for, because I'm almost certain I saw some specialty. Okay, so you're not going to be able to identify the poison at all? You did ask for a perception check before. I got a 15. I wasn't sure what that was for. No, that's 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 good. Uh, no, around the bowl, you're doing a perception check on the bowl itself. It just looks like an empty bowl of porridge. There's some scraps in it, but the kettle where the porridge was served from, uh, there's still some in there, but doesn't look like anything crazy. It's just porridge. Do we recall seeing whether anybody else received porridge? Yeah, I mean, you guys got some porridge. I'd take uh, a bite of porridge. From where? The whole bowl. The big cauldron. The From the kettle? Yeah. The Daru is just like, eh, one way to figure this out. You take a big old bite. <laughs> Tastes okay. Is there turnips in it? Most it's, certainly. It's a turnip porridge, so... <laughs> Gross. Yeah. You guys, everybody kind of like sits and waits, <sighs> holding their breath, waiting for Daru's face to turn purple. But I'm, nothing, I'm, nothing I'm happens. I'm still a little drunk. I'm going to eat some porridge, too. <laughs> <laughs> what other... So you said we were served porridge also, mm -hmm. but we other didn't have patrons. a chance... To, did anybody else have a chance to eat theirs? Do we... I mean, do we see anybody else eating theirs? Or because of the bar fight, nobody actually started eating theirs? If you would like, you can go back out to the dining room and check and just see for some bowls. See if there's any uh, any uh, porridge bowls that are out there that might be have uh, bites taken out of it. All right. can do that and also look at our bowls to see if they're poisoned, I guess. Okay. Okay. That's a good point. Because maybe it wasn't just bored. It was anybody in the caravan or maybe it was just bored. I don't know. So you guys go back out. There's a couple of bowls, smaller bowls than Bort's, of the porridge out there. And uh, more than a couple of them have bites taken out of them. Some of them are halfway gone. Some of them are gone. Uh, your guys' porridge, since you didn't really eat any of your porridge, you got really caught up in the bar fight and didn't bother afterwards. Go ahead and somebody give me a perception check on the porridge. Whoever's, whoever's checking out to see if they can determine whether it's poison. I rolled in that one, which would be Nick eight. Micklick was out there, and I guess Plum would probably go out with him. I also rolled on that one. Get a five. I, I rolled a three for an eight, so... Holy crackers, guys. Your guys' is... Dario, you're going to have to eat more of this shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we determine it was poison, like, right off the bat, or did he just, like, could have just choked on it? Like, I investigated when it happened, right? Yeah, you actually did a really solid medicine check, I remember, if yeah. I remember correctly. That determined that he was not choking. He was, in fact, his throat was okay. closing. Yep. But there's no saying it came from... Might be, like, an onset thing? Well, I mean, he ate it pretty quick, so it seemed like it was pretty instant. We had just gotten it, and he had just started eating, I think. It would certainly seem to have been the porridge, but it could have been perhaps something else. Maybe he has a turnip allergy. You would think he would have died in many of the other times that he came it here. It just I, I happened. Was say, Spencer, don't say stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> Late wow. onset deadly allergy. Yes. You guys uh, are kind of in the dining room talking about this, and Dama's like, um, look, I, I've had a really trying night, and I understand that you all want to, you know, check everything out and, 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 and look. Did Rolf give you guys the go-ahead to do this? Affirmative. Okay. I'll trust you. I don't trust her. 
Is there like a sense motive in this? What, what do we have? I don't think sense motive's a thing anymore. Oh, um, it, it's deception. It's perception. Unless deception. That's right. But I was just reading. You can like take a skill feat to make it uh, other things. But yeah, default is perception. Okay, I'm gonna do a perception to see if I feel like she's hiding something. Uh, Fifteen. Mm, no, no, you don't really think that she's uh, hiding anything at all. She does seem very visibly like a worn down and mentally drained. She just looks really tired. All right. Look, look, I, I can definitely be certain that I'll make sure nobody touches anything and everything will be right where it was when you come back in the morning. But we have some rooms above the stable if you would like to stay for the evening. Me sleep here. Yeah, same. I, I have a pup tent, which I will pop up for a little bit of privacy and use my bedroll. And I will simply sleep here in case somebody comes in and tries to fuck with things. And there's a knock at the front door of the tavern. Dumma looks up. Her nerves are kind of shot a little bit. Ah, Micklick, was it? Yes. Would you mind getting the door for me? Sure. Micklick Thank will you. walk over to the door and open it. When you open the door, it's Tamley. She looks really morose. The twins told me. Is he really dead? Bort dead. Can I see his body? Downstairs. And she looks up at Delma. Delma nods her head and waves towards the stairs. And she starts walking back there, trying to restrain herself, obviously, from running. Um, but I, she goes She goes down the stairs. And Plum, Plum will accompany her, just in case. Plum goes with, and she keeps walking. She gets down to the body, and she goes down to her knees. And she just goes, oh, Bort. Who could have done this to you? What I make are we going to do without you? I make a deception check to try and pretend like I care. <laughs> I nice. get it. 11. <laughs> she, she's not even paying attention to you at all. That's good. That's good. Which is good because you heard, you heard what you were saying. Oh, there, there. Everything will be okay. Delma uh, walks down the stairs. Tamley stands up, and she looks down at you, Plum, and she just goes, Come, you can join us. The caravan is drinking to Bort's memory. We've broken into the fine Keonan wines. I joined them. Something other than turnips, sir. Right? She walks out. She looks like she's on the verge of crying the entire time, but she tries to stay. She tries to stay strong. She realizes that... The caravan is her responsibility now. I said, what a responsible person. I intend to drink a lot of elf wine and not be responsible. <laughs> Tamley and uh, Plum and Delma come up, come up from the cellars. Tamley heads right for the doors. Do you all follow? Plum said he would. Uh, they're, they're breaking out the fine Keonan wine. Uh, just in case you didn't know, um, Keo Keonan is the elf nation just south of the Stolen Lands, and it's... It's very, very good wine. I don't understand the thing you just said, but I heard wine multiple times. So I'm yes, uh, much better than the turnip ale. The click looks kind of confused. Where go? Sleep here. Oh, we can come back and sleep here, but first we're going to go drinking the good stuff. Oh, and, and, and pay respects to Bort's memory, of course. Diplomacy check. Tamley's already out uh -oh. of the bar. But I rolled a 20 and got a um, 20, 27. Uh, your diplomacy on the rest of the party? I say, it sounds more like a deception than a diplomacy anyways, but... <laughs> same, the same result. <laughs> but there's a role to get uh, Micklick to come out drinking with us. There you go, that's it. Bring here? Sure, Micklick, sure. You stay here and watch over things and we'll bring you back some wine. I'll stay with the goblin. So we've got Vorn's going to go drinking, Plum's going drinking at the caravan. Is Micklick staying at the tavern? At the feed mill? Yeah, he was told they were going to come back with wine, but he doesn't really care for that elven sissy stuff, so he just goes and gets some turnip <laughs> ale. Delma, Delma will, uh, will definitely pour you some. She likes you, but I don't think she's... She, she wouldn't let you go behind the bar. You're still a patron. I, I assumed she was going to leave at some point anyway, so... Daru, and you're staying with Miklik? Yep. Split the party. Split the party. <laughs> <laughs> it always ends fantastically. <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to go well. Miklik and Daru, um, Delma would serve you each one more drink, and she would have one herself. 
Um, but then she insists that she's going to be closing down the bar. I really must be going to bed. And I have to check on my father and make sure he's okay. And I should really let him know what happened as well. So she would ask that you finish your drinks and then she would take you to the space above the stables to your uh, straw stuffed mattresses. Comfy. Um, Miklik wanted to stay in the bar. Mm, Yama's not comfortable with that. Well, we're not comfortable leaving the crime scene. Uh, I will I will lock it, Miklik. I promise. Nobody has access to this. So there is. This, so this isn't an inn. It's just a, a tavern. No, no, no. It's a tavern. It's an inn. Well, it, so it, so there's sleeping quarters heavy, upstairs. No, heavy air quotes on inn. The only room that they have is is like a big open area loft above the stable. Oh, okay. So there are no like comfortable sleeping rooms like you would expect from a normal inn. Oh, okay. And it's a general store here as well. No, I please, Mick, like, I, I, I promise you, nobody will get in. We're just going to lock it up. If you feel the need to guard it, uh, please guard it from the outside. Micklick will sit at the front door. Thank you, Micklick. And she starts walking home. Dara, what do you do? Yeah, I'll just go to a room then. Okay, got it, got it. Dara, when you walk into the stables to go up to the loft, uh, you see two little feet sticking out from one of the empty st stalls. I see that? Mm hmm What's the stalls? So like the, the rooms or what stalls are we talking about? Uh, no, 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 like the horse stalls. Because the rooms are in the loft above the stables. And again, heavy air quotes on rooms. This place is disgusting. Can we go? <laughs> no, you have to stay. It's going to be the other goblin. It's <clears throat> the little guy that was being harassed by Alad. The Finnick? Finnick. Dobby. Daru, do you just go? Do you ignore the feet and go up to your room? I yeah, I don't care. Daru goes up to the <laughs> loft. There's nobody else up there right now tonight. Just you for right now. So then we're gonna cut over to the caravan peeps. Uh, Vorn stumbles over to where the caravans are parked. They're not very very far away from the wagons. Plum, you find yourself being used as kind of like a, a walking staff. He just kind of puts his hand on your head and he uses you to stabilize himself. Seems about right. But when you get there, uh, the Teamsters uh, and the people who are there are, are drinking. They're not, not all of them are quiet. Uh, they're telling stories about Bort, and they're remembering him. When you get there, Ulf, one of the twins, or maybe it was Ulf? You don't know. It's hard to tell. They're impossible to tell apart. He just goes, oh, the passengers, come, come, drink with us. Listen, listen to... How Bort affected us at all. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to their stories of Bort. Hopefully they're more realistic than his stories about himself. Uh, you guys sit down, and uh, you get past some of the wine. And for Plum, it's exquisite red wine. It's phenomenal. I'll listen to anything while I'm drinking this. I will listen to Finnick and Micklick making out if I have this to drink with. Ugh. I can't even... I don't so, know why you would say a thing like that. Yeah, why was <laughs> that the first thing that came to your mind? Like, what, what have you been thinking about? Suddenly, I'm trying to think of a terrible thing. Suddenly I'm trying to, like, visualize how how exactly do goblins make out? Teethy, really. Yeah, so they, have, they have very wide mouths, so... Odd, odd, the, the image is just <laughs> odd. Okay, yeah, okay let's, let's go on from the... Uh, the goblins who are making out. But you guys get the idea. Uh, Plum and uh, Vorn from the idea. Mostly Plum, Vorn, you're just drinking, yeah. That a lot of Bort's tales are absolutely out of proportion. But they loved that about him. They loved how big he was. They loved how much he loved life. And there's a lot There's a lot that happens uh, and they pass, they, they go They go through what they've opened from the Keonan, and they open up some more wine. Not not quite as good as the Keonan wine, but still very good wine, Plum Plum. And this goes on through the night. Now I'm going to ask, they will go till sunrise, and about halfway through the night, that seems really obvious. Do you all stay? Uh, no. At one point, what I would like to do is try and swipe a bottle of the wine and make my way back to the hayloft to drink in peace. Okay, how are you going to... Are you trying to sneak some of the wine out of there? Yes, that would be exactly 
what I would like to try and do. I have a good stealth check. So you're looking to hide one of the one of the wine skins. Yeah, conceal an object. I think. Yep. Yep. Probably. Let's do that. Do what we want to do. Okay. So I am going to. Oh, it's another like secret roll. You would roll my stealth check. All right. Want me to do that secret roll thingy thing? I absolutely do. And it will go against the DC of anybody who may be watching. Mm-hmm. I got that number. All right. Secret roll incoming. Fantastic. All right. So. So as you kind of like you you stick the wine skin really surreptitiously into your coat and uh, Vorn, it looks like Plum's getting ready to leave. What are you doing? That's a good question. Um, Passing out. I mean, how much more can you really drink? I got a decent constitution. What is what is your constitution score? Fourteen. Okay, that's all right. What about your fortitude? Five. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say... Alcohol poisoning, I treat myself. I know. See, that's the shit, right? Five isn't even that bad at level one. By the, by the way, I've spent like the last five minutes on Google trying to find a uh, photo of goblins making out. <laughs> <laughs> there's, really, there's really nothing on here. I found one, but they're more like passionately kissing. It's not really a make-out. Um, oh, back, back to what I was actually doing in the campaign. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got sidetracked. My bad. I'm, I'm on a lot of medicine for my cold and stuff. Half of the party um, is sick right now. It should be noted. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I see Plum leaving, I'd probably do the same. He, he tried hiding a bottle, right? Yeah, he did. Do you want to make a perception check against that? I'm too drunk to even notice that he probably was trying to do that. That makes sense. But I will try to grab a bottle for myself. Okay. And I'm, I'm not going to try to hide that. I'm just going to go. Not going to try to hide be it. Like, be like, good night, guys. It's fun. As you guys uh, get up to go and leave, Talma stands up and she kind of puts her hand on Vorn's shoulder and she says, "Look, please. Bort was more than just a merchant. More to, more than just the boss. He was my friend. We won't leave here until we find out who did this. It sounds like this Rolf is just an absolute fool. We need to get to the bottom of this." I'd be a fool to think that I could do it. But you, you might have a chance. Please, you might be able to figure out who killed Bort and get justice for him. For all of us. Will you help uncover who did this? I take a swig of the bottle of wine I'm taking and uh, drunkenly say, I've been living in the woods all my life. Why, why do you think I can figure this out? Oh, I, I, I held your shoulder to stop you. I was talking to the small man. Oh, talk to him. I'm gonna leave though. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk away drinking. I'm no investigator, but a man shouldn't be murdered. That's for sure. Particularly poison. Real bad way to go about it. Coward's way, one might say. I, I'll try and find who did it. I don't place a lot of faith in my own abilities, but I've got friends here with me, and for all they seem a little crazy, I think they've got some abilities of their own. We'll do everything we can. I don't know shit, I say from the distance. <laughs> I get a diplomacy check of uh, 21. Fantastic roll. Wasn't absolutely necessary, but well done anyways. She, she's, she's, tears start streaming down her cheeks, and she goes, thank you. Thank you. I know Rolf said that we wouldn't leave until the court judge arrives, but I don't want to leave until we find out what happened to Bort. Thank you for your help. And she goes back to the fire. I turn and walk away with my wine, hoping I've gotten away with it. You absolutely have. Fantastic. I go back to the hayloft and pleasantly sit and drink the wine. And... Oh, hold on. Before you get to the hayloft. Oh, never mind. Micklick, you've been sitting on the stoop of this place for like three fucking hours, and you see Plum and Vorm walk up. Hey, my wine? I got wine. I hold up the, what's left of the bottle. There's not much left in that bottle. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine there's much left. And I'm, stumbling, <laughs> I'm stumbling. I probably dropped the bottle. Uh, if he does drop the bottle, I will try and make a reflex save and then use um, Mage Hand to try and keep it from falling. I I'll give you that. that. Yeah. That's cool. Do that. Okay, what do you want? Like a reflex save to see if I react quickly enough? I like reflex save to start off there. Yep. All right, so I roll an 11, which for my reflex is 6. That gives me a 17 reflex save. That's good enough. Okay, Mage Hand can do an item of uh, 
light bulk. Which a bottle of wine absolutely would be. I would say it probably is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... Do you mage hand it back into my hand? No, I'll mage hand it up to Micklick. He didn't get any. Oh. Micklick will grab it and drink whatever's left of it. There's about maybe a quarter of the bottle left. You know when you're drinking a bottle of wine and you're like, oh yeah, there's still like a fourth of it left, but you forget about that big indent at the bottom and there's not actually as much as you think there is? (laughs) That's basically what's going on there, yeah. He'll drink it and then kind of like turn it upside down and be like, eh. It was good if you have a taste in wine at all. Yeah, not really. It was alcohol. (laughs) So you guys end up going back up to the loft. Daru, I can imagine, passed out as soon as he laid down. Yep. So Taru's sleeping. The three of you go up. Vorn stumbles upstairs. Um, you three see the small set of feet sticking out from one of the empty horse stalls. But you also see the team that was uh, hauling the wagons in here as well. And you guys all make your way upstairs to the loft. Mick and- will go check on Finnick. Uh, you walk up to the feet. Are you just walking over there? You're not trying to be quiet at all? Oh, no. Okay. Uh Micklick walks over, and you see it's it's not Finnick, actually. Oh. Um, it's the small halfling, Edra. Edra. The, uh, the uh, halfling female who took the horses from you when you got oh, sleeping. Right. She's sleeping in the stables. Huh. She's very dedicated. I just assumed Finnick would be relegated to sleeping in the stables. That was my assumption as well. You guys go up to the larder. Does Y'all... she sleep through me walking up to her and, like, looking at her and... I'm assuming she's still alive, at least. Like certainly. I can see her breathing. <laughs> yeah, you can see her breathing. She's certainly still alive, and she she doesn't wake up. She might stir a little bit at you coming by, but she doesn't she doesn't wake up. Yeah. Micklick will just think to himself, "Oh, that's not who I thought it was going to be," and then just walk away. <laughs> so you guys go up, you sleep, and the night is uneventful. Otherwise, I will say that you guys probably got to sleep around like two or three, except for Daru. Daru got to sleep or like. At like 10. I'm not human. I need all the sleep I can get. Um, let's talk about resting and recovery. When you get a night's sleep, you recover hit points equal to your constitution modifier, minimum one. So even if you have like a 10 in your constitution, you still count one on this. So we use a constitution mo- modifier times your level. So at first level, that's going to basically equal your constitution modifier. Um, If you have a constitution modifier of zero, you still gain one hit point because minimum one when using your con modifier for this. We're going to be here a while, boys. Yeah. (laughs) That's gracious. I could heal using medicine. Can you? Yeah. I was just looking up the rules for it. I saw it before, though. Horn is in no position to be healing. No, the the next morning. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so in the next morning, everybody wakes up. Uh, Daru's feeling refreshed. You feel like you got a decent night's sleep, Daru. It was a little more comfortable than sleeping on the grounds under the wagon. As far as uh, Micklick and Plum go, it was a little rougher. You had a little bit of a long night. Vorn, you're walking fucking death this morning. Yeah, that sounds about right. In the morning, we're going to go through preparation. Now, rules-wise, the morning preparation uh, is for all the characters. Uh, This is the time of the day that uh, spellcasters prepare their spells, if you're a prepared spellcaster. Um, If you're a a different kind of spellcaster, you know, a spontaneous caster in this case, um, and you need to, like, pray for your spells or revere nature for an hour to gain your spells back. Uh, This all takes place within the first hour of the day. You can also do other things that might be necessary during the first hour of morning preparation and what have you. Um, But we're going to dive in and we're going to see what is the party doing the morning after Bort's death. I would like to uh, heal everybody since everyone's a little bit wounded still except for myself. So I'm going to try to uh, treat wounds. Okay, tell us a little bit about how Treat Wounds works. So, looking into it, uh, the only requirement is that I have a healer, uh, healer's tools or a healer's kit. Uh, what I do is spend 10 minutes to treat an injured living creature. Uh, that does go for myself if needed. I can only do it once per hour per person. 
And as of right now, it'd be a DC 15 check. Is that um, something that's written? Check. Is that something that's written into the treat wounds bit here? Yeah, DC yes. 15. Correct. Does it, does and that it does. Up? It does scale as my uh, proficiency in medicine goes up. So later on, once I'm like an expert or you know, master, the DC I can choose to have the DC be higher to heal more. Do you uh, choose? Yeah, it always heals two D eight, but I can add a static later on if I raise the DC up. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So right. So two D eight per person, and if I critically fail, they actually take damage. Oh, well done. Who are you going to be treating wounds for? Uh, Miklik, for sure, because I, I know he's still hurt. Um, Plum and Daru, I don't know if you guys still have... I just I didn't do my rest full, but I'm full now after resting. Daru. I'm still down two, so I'd, if, I'd take a little. I'll do Miklik first. Considering one at wolf acid killed me, I would like to have full HP. <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, if it takes it. ten minutes for him to heal Miklik, I can just lay on hands... Plum, and then I'll just pray again to get. Yeah, because that uses your focus, right? Yep. Yeah. So I heal you six, Plum. Thank you, thank you, friend. And then I go back into solitude and pray some more. So I rolled a sixteen plus my seven. I got twenty-three for my check on Miklik. So I succeeded. Wow. He's gonna get two d eight. Okay. He gets eight back. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miklik's probably a little fidgety. Waiting, like sitting there for 10 minutes while you do this, but he's also pretty hurt, so he'll let you. <laughs> and I imagine all it's really doing is like wrapping up his wounds and poultices. Sure. All right. So, I guess you spent the first hour or so of your morning cleaning up your wounds from yesterday, gathering your energy. Um, what's the first thing you do this morning after that? I go look to see if the uh, tavern is making coffee. Okay. Uh, see, see if it did indeed get. Un stay undisturbed, or you know it's going to be turn up coffee, right? Oh fuck me! <laughs> <Dear> God, <laughs> turn up <iced> coffee. <laughs> it's a turn up tea. Sounds awful. You guys end up uh, walking down uh, from the loft in the stables, and you see uh, Edra, the halfling that took you in. She's uh, brushing down the horses. She looks well. Can I get a perception check from everyone? Yes. Do they have such thing as a passive perception? Is it just... Can I critically succeed a skill check? Absolutely. I just you did. You rolled a 20? Yes. I rolled a 1, so... I got a 16. <laughs> I don't think there's actually a critical a critical succeed for perception specifically. All right. Well, I'm 24. Well, Daru, you notice that... Uh, you notice that Edra is looking very perturbed um, and worried right now. And she was the barkeep? Uh, no, Edra oh. is the stable hand. Halfling. Oh, okay. She was the sleeping halfling. Oh, yes. okay, gotcha. Alright, well, I would go up to, uh, Edra and see what's amiss. Huh? Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Tired. Oh, I see. Um, can I help you? Uh, yeah, we're here to investigate the murder of, well, possible murder of Bort. Oh, He uh, seems I, concerned. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. I, uh, uh, no, well, uh, yes, I am. I am concerned. Yes, uh, the horses. The horses seem to have some really nasty case of fleas. I think uh, they're not doing too good after the the wolves attacked your your train coming in. Wolf fleas. I think I'm going to need some kind of poultice to make them if they're going to be get any better. I'm really concerned about them. I just brushed the fleas off myself. Can't we do that for the horses? Uh, no, they went untreated for too long. I have a poultice that I can make, but it requires a lot of rosemary. Oh, I just happen to have a bag of rosemary. You do? No, oh. sorry. You know, I know, of, I know <laughs> of a place just outside of town. There was a big old patch of rosemary, but I'm a little afraid to go get it myself. There's a big bear that likes to sleep in those bushes. Hey, Vorn, you want to go fight a bear? Kind of. I mean, it sounds like fun. I could go talk to the bear, too. Can you do that? I mean, not like talk, talk, but... Uh... He could talk to a bear, as in if you ran into a bear in the woods, David, you could talk to the bear. <laughs> so yeah. you, don't, you don't have wild empathy. <laughs> no, I do. Still don't gonna eat you, empathy. but... <laughs> I guess it doesn't understand you. No. Is it gonna attack you? Absolutely. No, she's, uh... 
I, I, uh, I'm just, I'm, I am, I'm very concerned if you're willing to, but uh, are you doing something about Bort? Do we know what's going to happen to his body? We need to wait for the, the judge. Oh, okay. Is, uh, is there anything I can do to help? You just focus on that uh, poultice once I get you the rosemary. Ask her. I know you're the only one there, but you should ask her if there is. Oh, you any... guys all walked down. We all went there. Okay. He just went off to the side, I mean, to go talk to her. You could easily see him go off to the side and join him if you'd like. Sure, I'll walk up. Would I have heard her ask that question of him? It's not a terribly big stable. It wouldn't have been difficult to hear that. No, you hear it. Well, perhaps you could help us out, dear Edra. Did you happen to witness anything oh, questionable? Anything that you think might be related to Bort's poisoning in the porridge? Do you know uh, where... Might get some poison around here. You know where the rosemary is. Perhaps you know where poison is. Uh, no, 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 I don't, I don't know where you could find any poison. Um, last night I just was taking care of the horses. I did see Finnick run out right when the bar fight started. Well, that makes sense. He seems a bit cowardly. I don't think I suspect Finnick, but it's worth noting. Thank you. Trin left through the stable doors shortly after the bar fight started as well. Good, good. Also appreciate that. But I don't, I don't really know anything about the kitchens or the food. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I sleep in the stables. I don't, don't really get inside the tavern very often. I'd rather be with the horses. That's all well and good. Thank, thank you very much, Edra. Okay. She goes back to combing the horses down and taking care of them, getting them fed for the morning. What do you guys do after that? Well, do we want to go get this rosemary, or do we want to investigate Bort? Well, Bort's just, uh... <clears throat> I mean, yeah, we're already here. We could probably go, did you want to, like, say, investigate his body more, or? I think one thing we want to do is look to see if anything in the tavern in the kitchen changed or was disturbed, just to see if there's, I don't know, maybe if something was changed or moved, somebody might Over, have... Overnight, I... you mean? Yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah, you can get head in there. When you go in, Delma's already there this morning. She's kind of cleaning up in the dining room a little bit, getting rid of, you know, she was getting rid of some of the, the plates that were left out, picking up the chairs uh, and the mugs that were thrown during the bar fight. She didn't really get a chance to clean up after the bar fight at all. And last night she was just so exhausted, she just went home after everything was all said and done. Um, so she's doing that now, and she goes, Ah, welcome, welcome back. How was your sleep? Fine. That's good. Amora isn't coming in. I, I, I'm not going to reopen the kitchens for a few days at least. Just trying to keep everything in order here. Get it picked back up. I would like to just sort of look around for a while, make a perception check. And, and uh, my more okay. perceptive friends to do the same. See if we can just see anything that seems amiss from last night. Okay. Perception checks for those who want to participate. Yeah, I'll join. 21. That's good, because I only got an 11. I rolled a natural one and got a hit. <laughs> Miklik gets a 16. So you guys are uh, kind of checking over everything. It's almost right. There's not anything that's really changed from last night. Daru, when you guys are checking out the kitchen, you're walking by the, the counter where the porridge is at. And you smell something that seems a little bit off. And you kind of sniff the, the, the bowl that uh, Bort's porridge was served in. And it has this, flame, this faint floral scent to it. Who noticed this? Daru. So the bowl itself? Yeah. Like just the contents of the bowl? It's an unusual smell, but it's, fl it's faintly floral. I go back out to Delma. Well, I guess, Daru, would you inform us of this? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. I go back out to Delma. Delma, please tell me, is there any kind of herbalist or alchemical expert here in town, or not expert even, just hobbyist, just anybody in town who might be able to tell us a little bit about local poisons in the area? Uh, no, no, not that, not that I'm aware of, no. There hasn't been a, a an herbalist in town for decades. Ah, okay. Why? Well, I'd just like to see if I can find out anything about maybe any poisons that leave a floral aroma is all. Floral aroma? Where are you getting this? 
Well, here, why don't you see what you can make of it? You are uh, a person from these parts. And I have her smell the bowl and see what she thinks. Okay, she goes over and <laughs> she sniffs at it. You're right. The bowl does smell floral. Then she moves over to the kettle. I don't smell it coming from the kettle. You don't suppose this smells like the soap you use to wash the dishes, does it? No, not at all. No, I don't recognize this smell at all. Daru, you were the one that's, that found this? Correct. Can you, you, can you smell the kettle? See if you can get the smell from the kettle. I attempt to smell the kettle. Okay. Uh, no, you don't smell the floral smell coming from the, from the kettle. So someone's tampered with the bowl. Well, okay, I'm good here. Should we go get the rosemary? I think so. All right, so you guys uh, head out of town. You start, uh, Edra would be able to direct you to where the rosemary bushes are. Because, you know, during a murder investigation, it's definitely important to make sure you're helping the horses and their fleas. Hey, this is we need these horses to leave. That's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> you guys end up going to where uh, uh, Edra tells you where the rosemary bushes are uh how do you guys approach the area she did mention that there's often a bear that yeah. sleeps in these bushes i want to go talk to the bear okay plum what do you do i, I approach cautiously micklick very wary of the bear micklick just walks right in and dar hey if my boy says he can talk to a bear i'm gonna let him talk to a bear so plum go ahead and give me a secret stealth check these secret checks freak me out, man. I don't like not knowing how well I'm doing. I love it. So you guys uh, kind of come up. Plum's like trying to like sneak along the the bushes, coming, uh, you know, the trail, and sneaking along the trees and the undergrowth. And uh, the other three of you are just wa waltzing up. Uh, the three of you give me perception checks. Actually, Plum, you give me a perception check as well. 19 for Micklick. 17. Rolled the net 20. That's a 27. Damn. I rolled four ones to their three ones tonight, <laughs> so it's about goddamn time I rolled a 20. <laughs> Plum gets a six, so I don't see shit. Plum's too focused on not being seen by the sleeping bear. That's exactly right. Nature freaks you out, doesn't it? That, the nature that's on land, yeah. Oh, I don't land nature. I don't understand land nature. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Vorn, you see the bear very easily you know you know the shape that you're looking for and it's like smack dab in the middle of the rosemary bushes here i'm actually going to uh share a map with the party right now map rosemary bushes it's almost like we were supposed to come here but yeah you do see the bear he is right in the middle of a ring of rosemary bushes so you all are approaching from the north end and vorn you're leading everybody here yeah i would say so Go ahead and position yourselves here as you approach the sleeping bear. I position myself out of harm's way. So, like, not in here at all? If he's off the map? No, I'll be where I position myself, just kind of behind you guys. Okay, okay. Dario, are you in the back? Uh, yeah, sure. Are you Covering like, our flank. <clears throat> Covering the flank, got it. Okay, um, this is... Actually, I don't even have the size right on this. It is, in fact, a large, Vorn can tell you this, a large grizzly bear. And it's... <laughs> it's sleeping. Well, shall I try to sneak up and just get some rosemary without waking it up? But I say it much quieter. I mean, I can go talk to the bear. Can you do druidy things? Druidy things. I have wild empathy. Okay. You do druidy things then. I'm really bad at it, by the way. I've got your back, I promise. I, got, Mick... I, have, a, I have a negative to my role. Huh? Mick, Mick like laughs and he's like, See you, Longsheng, talk bear. Vorn, what do you do? You go up and talk to the bear? I am super tempted to walk up to it and start petting it. I will give you that and you're going to need to give me a wild empathy roll. How do you approach the bear? Are you just walking up to it? Do you cautiously walk up to it, like sl like slowly and silently? Or what are you doing here? I'm going to just try to stealthily walk up to it to go pet it. My, All stealth, right. my stealth is actually pretty decent. Okay. You're going to sneak up on a bear to pet it. I need you to make a secret check on this one. That's actually probably good because my roll wasn't very good. So make sure you put uh, your modifier in before dropping it in the dice yeah. tower. Yes. Just quick question. Is your druid suicidal? 
Yes. He's chaotic neutral. He just wants to pet a bear, Dan. That doesn't it. mean suicidal. <laughs> uh, All chaotic neutral characters, obviously. Just suicidal. wants to pet the fucking bear. So, Vorn, go ahead and position yourself up next to the bear. Vorn walks up, kind of quietly. You, you, you end up, uh, you notice at your feet, there are a lot of dried leaves in the bushes <laughs> here. So as you get closer, you get about 10 feet away, it's crunch, crunch, crunch. And it's just loud, and the bear mm, lifts up his head, and it looks at you. Wild empathy. Before you even get close enough to pet it, go ahead and give me your wild empathy roll. Now, hold on. Before we actually fully dive into this, what is what what are the rules regarding wild empathy here, Ted? So I've been trying to figure out if it tells me the DC or any of it. It doesn't. Don't worry about the DC. I've got that. Okay. All wild empathy says is I have a connection to the creatures of the natural world. Blah, 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 blah. I can communicate with them on a rudimentary level. Um I can use diplomacy to make an impression on animals and to make very simple requests of them. So in, here's in most, what you're going to... In most cases, wild animals will give me the time to make my case. Please, okay. please make the request, don't eat the halfling. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, the, there's one key phrase in there that jumped out at me, and it was make an impression. If you go to the diplomacy section uh, of the skills chapter... There is an action for making an impression. Let's find that. It says, with at least one minute of conversation during which you engage in charismatic overtures, flattery, and other acts of goodwill, you seek to make a good impression. At the end of the conversation, attempt a diplomacy check against the will DC of one target, modified by any circumstances the GM sees fit. Good impressions or bad impressions on a critical failure Last for only the current social interactions unless the GM decides otherwise. So you're going to make a diplomacy check. Wonderful. I currently get a minus one. Fantastic. Diplomacy. I'm just going to tell you right away, because I, I, want, I, want, I want you to know this. You're going to need a 16 to make any kind of positive impression on this. Do you want me to do a secret roll? Mm, no. What do you roll? I rolled a five, so a, a four. That's a critical failure. Hero point. Hero point. Yeah, I'll hero point that. Ooh, hero point. First hero point used. Have we talked about hero point rules? A little bit. Actually, I, I meant to, I think Very when we briefly. brought it up last time, I said we would approach it more when we did it. So here we are. Hero points are something that uh, if you follow the rules for it, and I know that there's probably going to be a lot of home uh, house ruling on this, but hero points, every player will get one hero point at the beginning of a session. And throughout the session, the game master can hand out hero points for good role playing, good ideas, you know, heroic descriptions of things that they're doing. Um, and uh, right now, Hero points can be spent in one of two ways. You can either spend one hero point to re-roll any die, uh, but you have to take the result of the second roll, not the highest one. The other way that you can spend hero points is you can use all of the hero points. You have to use all the hero points that you have for the session in order to make a heroic recovery, which if, like, for example, when David got sprayed by the Caustic Wolf in the first session, uh, he could have spent his hero point to not gain the dying one condition and just be at zero hit points and unconscious. So he can use those hero points to save your life. So, Vorn's using, or Ted's using his first uh, hero point to reroll this, uh, make an impression on the grizzly bear. I and just know. to throw it in there, you do need to, you cannot know the results before using the action point, correct? Uh, no, that's not that's not pointed out in the hero point for it. Not that I've seen in the so rules. You can, so the DM can tell you if you fail or succeed and then use the action point? As far as I can tell, yeah. But you have to take the result of the second one. Right. Yeah, I don't think it ma makes any mention at all about when you can use it. It just says you can use it basically any time, even when you couldn't normally act. Can no. you share hero points? No, I'm not allowing that in this. Because then you'd have, like, say, for example, Micklick gets into combat and uh, he goes down and is dying and he spends his hero point to recover. And then he gets up and he gets hit again. 
I'm not going to allow him to get basically five free revives. And, so, and l- unless one of us qualifies as a fa- familiar or animal companion of somebody else. Yes, you can with your familiar or animal companion. But none of us have any of those things. Until I get this bear. So did you make that roll or have you held I'm, off? I'm still holding the die. You are? Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm shaking with anticipation, Ted. I'm trying to avoid this roll. <laughs> I understand, but I want you to make this roll. I'm still shaking my hand. <laughs> I see that. You really are delaying this. Come on. Diplomatize the bear. What'd you get? Uh, I rolled a 13, so I got a 12. Ooh, that is a failure. However, that is not a critical failure. So that's a step above what it was before. Yes. Which is still not great because it's a fucking bear. So I mean, failure has no listing, so I assume that just means nothing happens. Yeah. That means nothing happens. So uh, Vorn walks up to the bear, and he's crunching through the leaves, and the bear wakes up and it looks at him, and it stares and watches Vorn approach it. Vorn puts one hand on the bear to pet it and gets one stroke in, and the bear takes a deep breath and just roars at you right in your face. You got bear spittle hitting you in the nose and in the mouth. We're gonna roll initiatives. Micklick will laugh. This is exactly what he hoped would happen. I'm sure. Do I get to use my stealth on this one? Uh, yeah, you do. Fantastic. Daru gets an 11. Okay, Daru gets an 11. Plum, 14. Micklick, 10. Vorn, 25. Woo! Ah, damn, Vorn. Where was that roll a second ago? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that would have been nice not too long ago. Yeah. Vorn, Storm. You've got your hand on a bear. He's growling in your face, and you have bear spit all over your face. And he looks like he's going to take his next opportunity to just absolutely tear you to shreds. What do you do? I can't reattempt my wild empathy, can I? <laughs> uh, I think Pet him make, again. I think in make an impression, it says that you need to wait a certain amount of time or circumstances need to change. Yeah, I kind of assumed that much. It's also supposed to take a minute, so. So Vorn, knowing that this went terribly wrong, he is going to get the fuck out of there. Um, so his first move is going to be to move trying to think of where to move how so i'm i see like we're surrounded by those bushes how thick are those bushes i mean do they block line of sight uh yes yes they do but the whole party absolutely very easily hears the bear just roaring at you i am going back behind the goblin vorn (laughs) strides back to behind micklick who is back on the path vorn Vorn just kind of like uh, 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 sprints out of there as the bear growls and roars at him. I know a pat Mick look on the back and be like, "Hey, the bear's friendly. You should go, you know, pet him." Vorn, that was how many actions was your stride? Just the one. Okay. Do you have two actions left? What do you do with them? I have nothing else I really want to do, so I'm good. Pass. Okay. After that, it is the bear's turn. Oh no. So the bear on its turn. You guys hear it just thundering through the bushes. And uh, it rushes up and just plows the bushes down right here. Uh, The bush that was in between the party and the bear is now trampled under its feet. And it comes right up to Vorn and it bites at Vorn. Vorn does a 14 hit you. Oh. Then... That is the grizzly bear, sir. And he just strides up to you and just, Arr! but you ah, dodge out of the way, hide behind Micklick as best you can. You know, and Micklick is so big. <laughs> it is Plum's turn. From my hiding spot, I, I, we're going to run out of map, but I would like to move back as far as I can with a single stride action. We can. We can uh, put you just off the map, and we'll just know you're one stride away from being on the map. Yeah, I want to be within, yeah, I mean, I want to be within 60 feet, but my stride is only 25. So I basically move 25 feet back to, or at least to where I still have a line of sight on Mr. Bear. Okay. I am going to cast an hydraulic push. Ah. I make a spell attack at Mr. Bear. Okay. Um, I roll a three. I think I would like to hero point that. I'm going to use my hero point. Ah, throwing hero points left and right tonight. 
No, this thing is fucking scary. I am very scared of the bear. I am a snack. I am a fun-sized Milky Way for this goddamn bear. You are quite the delicious-looking snack. There we you go. You are drawing attention to yourself. <laughs> that time I rolled an 18, so my spell attack is going to be a 25 to hit the bear. 25 hits the bear. So what happens on a success? Well, so I will deal him, to start with, 3d6 damage. Ooh, big hit on the bear. And I get a... 11. That's going to be 11 damage on 3d6. Okay, 11 damage and on the bear. He, it's not like this is going to matter, but he is pushed backward 5 feet. 5 feet, he gets pushed back. It's 10, 10 feet. 10 feet, he's knocked back. Oh, 10 feet. Yeah, even better. So you end up pushing him past it. Just this water fountain just gushes past everybody's head. Everybody is, like, in between uh, you and this hydraulic just jet stream that you uh, push out of your hands. I thread the fucking needle. It's exactly what you do, right in between everybody, and you push the bear all the way back over the threshold of the bush that he just trampled down, right back into his spot in the middle of the of the bushes. Well done, Plum. There is more distance between the bear and me. That is a success. Exactly. Daru, you are up. Well, he got pushed back to his sleeping spot. Did he go back to bed? <laughs> no, he looks pissed and wet. All right. Well, I will use this opportunity to put myself between the bear and my party here. So nice to have a paladin champion. Ah, uh, that'd be two movements. Does it take any type of reaction against me? It absolutely does not. All right. I will attempt a swing with my long sword. Dar strides up, all confidence and swagger. Swings at the bear. In the confidence of a eight to attack. Eight, eight does not <laughs> hit. Just whoosh, completely misses it. Then after Daru, it is Miklik's turn. Okay, let's see. What's the best way to do this? Um, Miklik will make a single stride to get to the back corner. You kind of working your way around the bear. Yeah, and then... Um, He'll use a second action to stride or step, whatever. Um, I guess step, because it's only five feet, to get in flanking with uh, Daru. So this will be the first time that we've had the party put anybody into a flanking position. So what way flanking works, if your party, two members of your party, are on opposite sides of an enemy, you have to be able to draw a line through the middle of your square and your ally's square and it needs to cross two sides or two corners of the creature you're fighting. In this case, it does, and it will make this bear flat-footed against this attack, which gives it a minus two to its AC. So it's a little bit easier to hit because it's being distracted by two en enemies on each side. And he will then use one action to attempt to bite it. Miklik tries to get a chunk out of the bear. All right, yep. make your attack roll. You're biting a bear? Yes. Miklik is attempting to bite the bear. Because of Miklik's uh, heritage, he has razor teeth, which gives him a jaw attack. <laughs> when the bear bites at you, bite back at the bear. Logic. Goblin logic, but logic. Absolutely. Goblin logic. Um, 15, 7. So that will be a 22 to hit the bear. 22 hits the, the bear. bear. It bites the bear. I don't suppose at a minus two, that's a critically hit the bear. What was it again? 22. No, absolutely not. I got a pretty thick hide. Um, I'm not absolutely raging, does. so I don't get that plus two from that. Uh, so I bite him for eight damage. Miklik just Arr! sinks his teeth right into the bear, and the bear, Arr! and he starts swinging around to get a better look at you. You said eight damage, right? Eight, yes. After Miklik, we're going to go back to the top of the order where Vorn Storm, the guy who started the fight. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought I had this. Like, I thought this bear, me and him were going to be buddies. And, uh... I just imagined when Vorn walked up, just like, I got this, guys. I got this. He goes behind the bushes and then he runs back. I don't got this. I don't got this. Too much turn of ale. <laughs> a little hungover from last night yet. Uh, so I am <laughs> going to produce a flame. A little fireball in my hand and throw it at him. All right, all right. Go ahead and make your spell attack roll against the grizzly bear. That's a 16 to hit? 16 does not hit. His uh, 
flaming ball of fire just <laughs> flies right over the bear's head. You were worried about hitting Daru and went a little wide. After Vorn... Oh, that's two actions, right? You still have one action if you choose to use it. Um, I don't have any other action I want to take. We're good. Okay. It is the bear's turn. The bear turns around at Miklik and tries to return the bite on him. He's going to bite at you. And god damn it, it's another 14 to hit. That will not hit Miklik. This is a very inaccurate bear. That's three. That's two threes in a row. This d20 goes right to the fuck off bag. That's where d20s go when they're not performing well. They Or any die, really. They go to the fuck off bag and you pull out a replacement. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of a min-maxed trope, the fuck off bag for dice. Yeah, it gets used a decent amount. Let's put it that way. All right, so now that I've got a fancy new D20 here, my white and sky blue marbled one, um, he's going to attempt to claw at Miklik. Ooh, much better. He's going to get uh, 29 to hit, even with uh, the multiple attack penalty. Is that a critical? Um, yeah, that's a critical. That's a critical hit. Uh, the my, champion my. will be using one of his reactions. Ooh, fuck. Oh, damn. Let's see it. What is it? As a redeemer, I have the ability called Glimpse of Redemption. Uh, it is triggered whenever an ally takes damage from an enemy that are both within 15 feet of me, which implies okay. the uh, enemy hesitates under the weight of sin as visions of redemption play in his mind's eye. The foe must choose one of the following to do no harm to my ally, or the ally gains resistance to all damage against the triggering damage equal to two plus my level, so three. After the damaging effect is applied, the enemy becomes enfeebled for two, enfeebled two until the end of its next turn. So the end of its next turn. Okay. The bear is extremely pissed off that Miklik bit into it. So uh, it's going to continue. It is definitely going to follow through with its claw attack. Just so. so you know, enfeebled is I was just about, yeah. the strength-based rolls in DC. So strength-based melee attack rolls, strength-based damage rolls, and athletic checks. Yes, definitely. So it's going to... On any subsequent attacks, damage will will take the minus. And what is it? Enfeebled one or two? two. Enfeebled two. two. Okay. So, the bear having enfeebled two is going to get a minus two to the damage roll to Miklik here. And I gain resistance three. You said. Yeah, you get three. But um, the uh, enfeebled does not take effect until the initial damage is done. So it's only going to affect him next turn. Oh, so he actually does... After the damaging it. effect is applied, the enemy becomes enfeebled for in two until the end of its turn. Got it. So the bear will deal damage as normally... With the three resistance. The, with the three resistance does apply, though, yeah. to this attack. Okay, got it. So that means uh, we haven't gotten into resistance, really. Uh, resistance, basically, if you uh, have resistance, in this case, to this particular attack against this particular creature means that once the damage roll is revealed, the total, you will remove whatever the resistance value is from that damage. In this case, it's going to be three less damage to Miklik. So very much like DR, if you're familiar with other systems. Very similar, except for resistance covers magical and physical damage. Nice. So there's none of that confusion anymore. Ooh, that was a big roll. This is going to deal you... 14 damage before resistance. <laughs> so 11 total? You will take 11 total damage. Dead. Now this bear, when he makes a successful claw attack, can use his ability with the claw, which is grab. That's if the right. monster's last action was a success with a strike that lists grab in its damage entry, or it has a creature grabbed using this action, the monster automatically grabs the target until the end of the monster's next turn. The creature is grabbed by whichever body part the monster attacked with, and that body part can't be used to strike creatures until the grab is ended. Grabbed, you're immobilized and flat-footed. If you attempt to a, ma a manipulate action, you must succeed at a DC five flat check or it is lost. Now, we'll get to what your options are, what you can do on your turn while you're grabbed, Miklik. But he's definitely going to successfully grab you. So, so he automatically grabs me or he automatically gets a grapple? Um, 
I'm looking at the monster rule for grab, and it's one action. It's similar to the knockdown. Yeah, it was like the wolf. Where the wolf didn't have to actually make an athletics check to knock you down. It just spent an action. The bear will do something similar. It spends an action to grab you, and that is its third action. So uh, the bear snaps at Miklik, misses, and then just rakes it across the chest and picks it up. Plum, your uh, friend Miklik is is hanging in the air and being held by a, a really big grizzly bear. From like 55 feet away, I just see like a gout of blood fly into the air, along with Miklik now in the claw of a bear. This is very scary, but it's not like I have anything else I can do. I will simply cast Ray of Frost, which is going to be another spell attack. All right. Go ahead and make your spell attack roll. I am going to get a pretty good 33 to hit, or 23 to hit, excuse me. Ooh, I was going to say 33. A 23 hits, but it is not a critical hit. All right. Uh, I will deal it 1d4 plus 4 damage. So that's going to be a min damage of five. Five damage to the bear. But it has bear. a range of, 20 of, of 120 feet. So with my third action, I am going to take another stride backwards as far as I can <laughs> in my line of sight. Plum is slowly retreating. You've got a backup plan. If the rest of the party dies, you're already far enough away where you can just run. Exactly. All right. All right. Plum. What a selfless halfling. Leave the selflessness to the palate. I'm a survivor. Oh, selfish. Sorry, sorry. I said that wrong. Selfish. Selfishness. Yes, yes. That, yes. that makes more sense. There we go. Daru, speaking of the Redeemer. All right. It's going to be Whoa. so hard not to call you a paladin every time I'm, <laughs> I'm referring to your class. Champion, champion, champion. Okay, Daru. Well, I guess I will just try a few attacks here. And uh, what's the flanking again? It's That's... Not plus to me, it's minuses to him now. Is that how? Yeah, minuses to his AC. So you just make. He probably doesn't count as being flanked now, though. That. Uh... No, he doesn't. Oh, he's grabbed. Sorry. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I will swing my long sword. And it is a 19 on the dice. And sorry, I do not have a long sword. It's a Warhammer. Um, I will swing. Good distinction. The Warhammer. Getting a 25 to hit. 25. 25 definitely hits. Nice. Uh, five damage. I'll try another attack at a minus five, I suppose, correct? Yes. Yeah. Warhammer crunches into the bear's side. Eleven. Misses. And uh, with my third action, I'll uh, <clears throat> hopefully it'll decide it wants to fight me. And I'll raise my shield. All right. Dora raises his shield and prepares for an onslaught from the bear. All right, Miklik, it is your turn. Now, okay. the bear, the way that the bear special ability works is that you will be grabbed until the end of the monster's next turn, unless it spends another action to continue the grab. So you can, from what I can see here, you can use the escape action to get out of the grab. After uh, a decent amount of rules lookup, we've determined that a the whole grappling grabbed thing in second edition is so much simpler that it confused the hell out of us. But we did find out that you can attack while you're being grabbed at no penalty. So knowing that, Miklik is going to use his first action to rage, giving him um, giving him a fist attack and also increasing his damage and giving him two temporary hit points, which he sorely needs. Probably hey, Mikulik, won't be how are, enough. <laughs> how are you looking right now, by the way? Um, very, very bloody. Very, yeah. very bloody. Okay, so his second attack, or his second action, he will make a swing at this guy. That is a 16 on the die for a total of 23 to hit him. Nice. 23 does hit the grizzly bear. So he, he then gets a total of let's 12 damage nice hit with his first punch he will then use his third action to attempt to punch it again that is only an eight on the die i don't think that's going to be enough this is a pretty tense situation so i'm going to use my hero point to re-roll that all right all right it's probably kind of risky but i think uh i think it's necessary here Oh, I don't know if that's going to be enough. Total of 22 minus 5 gives me a 17. 
17 misses. So I'm assuming he's not flanked anymore since I'm being grabbed? No, he has control over you. I'm going to say no. I know that this isn't really clearly defined. I was looking at the flanking rules. It doesn't say anything about the grabbed condition. It, so, doesn't, it, doesn't, it no longer says that the person grappling has the grabbed condition like it mm-hmm. used to. So, Nope. nope. It, it doesn't really... As far as I can tell, there's no negative effect to the grabber. So it's a good tactical strategy to use. Yeah. Well, that's the best I can do. That's All my right. three actions, so I'm done. After Miklik's turn, it is Vorn Storm's turn. Vorn, Miklik looks like he's just teetering on the edge. But then again, so does the bear. Miklik like, made this big, wide right hook right in its nose, and it looks like you completely broke its snout when you did it, and it's pissed. But it's teetering. So for my first action, I'm going to uh, step a little closer. Okay. Still a little ways from the bear. Um, About 10 feet away from the bear. For my second and third actions, I'm going to use heal and do it from the range. So you're using the two action heal? Yes. Which two means you get heal. 1d8 plus 8, if I remember? Correct. All right. And I'm going to heal my little goblin friend. 14. I heal 14? You heal yeah. 14 and roll the 6 plus 8. Well, I was down 15, so that gets me down to down to 1. You so Miklik, Miklik was looking pretty bad, but all of a sudden he feels a lot better and lets out like kind of a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> How long that will last, I don't know, but... <laughs> Did we just become best friends? <laughs> if, you ke- if you heal them, then the fight goes longer. You should heal the bear, too. <laughs> I wasn't actually tempted to. <laughs> I don't want channeling. Well, after Vorn, it is, in fact, the bear's turn. First thing it's going to do is... It is it is it is enfeebled, too, this round. So it's going to make a jaw attack on Miklik. And you're going to try to bite his little goblin head off. I will once again use Glimpse of Redemption. Again? It can choose to take no action or my partner gains three resistance it's it 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 wants this goblin snack but yeah it is a reaction triggered reaction it can be reacted every turn all right yeah it chooses to still attack but miklik you get resistance three to this attack if it hits ah on fire 23 to hit uh yeah i mean i have a minus three ac right now i think so i'm down to 15 What's the minus three AC from? Oh, raging. Um, I'm raging as a minus one, and because I'm grabbed, I'm flat-footed, which is minus two. Ah, all right. He bites. He tries to bite your head clean off. It gets 11 damage on you. And that's before the three resistance? That's before the three resistance. Okay, so he takes nine. He had two temporary, so we'll take that off. And will increase his wounds by seven. Actually, this might be a good opportunity to point out that when we're talking about HP, unlike a lot of RPG groups, we don't count down from our total HP. We have a tendency to count up using wounds instead of the other way around. So right now, Miklik has eight wounds out of a total of eight of 19 HP. Most other people would say he has 11 HP left. So just to let everybody at home know the difference. Uh, That was the bear's first action. For the bear's second action, he's going to have the grab. He's going to grab you. uh, Spend another action to keep you grabbed because he wants you. He wants that snack. And he's going to actually, he's going to bite at you again. I imagine, like, he could have done a lot of damage. And he looked like he was about to bite your head off. But Mick, like, uses his hands to kind of catch the teeth, catch the jaws right as it's going around his head. And that damage is just the bear's jaws sinking into his hands. And this is the final jaw attack. Miklik pushes the bear's jaws off of him. And you take no damage because he misses you. Plum, it is your turn. Yeah, we'll just be launching another uh, ray of frost here from my 75 foot away vantage point. (laughs) You're doing very well, friends. Good job. Uh, I will get a straight 20 to hit. Modified? Yeah, modified. 20. Modified, not rolled. Okay. Plum hits it with a ray of frost, and it just covers the bear 
That is a hit. Go ahead and give me damage. I do roll max damage, so that is going to be eight frosty icicle damage. Eight points of damage. Flash. The bear, the the, ro- the ray of frost hits the bear right on the back of the head, and this just encases him. This crystallized ice just <laughs> all the way around its head, and it falls. Victory! Well done, well I done. Sl- I slowly approach. Is is it is it dead? Miklik will like poke it with its hand. Click, 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 because its head is a solid block of ice. Yeah. Look so. I'll lay on hands of my goblin friend here. I was gonna say I can just treat him. Oh, right. that works as well. I, I force Miklik down and try to treat his wounds. <laughs> He's too hopped up. He's hopped up on the rage. Well, once that's... there's once there's no uh, enemies, the rage ends. And this actually is probably pretty beneficial to Vorn. Aren't you uh, fatigued or exhausted afterwards? Or is that different now? Yeah, that is different now. That does not happen. I just can't rage for another minute. Oh, you don't take penalties. Wow. Nope. Not after there's, the rage. There's actually no penalty to raging afterwards. afterwards. You just can't do it for a minute. That's pretty cool. And I lose any temporary hit points, but I used them, so. Well, the bear used those for you. Yeah. Uh, I, made, uh, I made the DC. Uh, you get 12 back. 12. I am full hit points. So immediately after the battle, Vorn, Vorn goes over to Miklik and starts patching his wounds. Miklik, are you, how do you feel about this? You're not, like, one to, yeah, to he, take the time. He's He has trouble... As I said earlier, he has trouble sitting there for 10 minutes just, like, letting someone put bandages and stuff on him. But that bear's definitely bit into his skin, and it hurts, so. I can imagine Mick looks just extremely fidgety. Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, he's a goblin, so he does not sit still. Well done. Well done, everybody. That was a moderate encounter. Fuck that. This rosemary was ridiculously difficult to obtain. Everybody is going to get, hold on, let me look up this experience point amount. I think it's 80, but I don't want to go off the top of my head. Yeah, it's 80. It is 80? Okay. You you sure it's not 800 and we level up? Uh, Nope. Everybody gains 80 experience points. Where does that put you now, party? Not even half. 280. Hey, there you go. Well done. Better get some XP for completing the side quest and getting this rosemary, too. Yes, let's uh, search the area, grab some rosemary, see if uh, there's anything else here that maybe the bear... Yeah, where's the bear's, bear's hoard? Yeah, we're loot. Uh, uh, d- no. Considering everything we've fought so far has just been animals. It's just been animals. And uh, the bear doesn't have... Vorn, Vorn's hands are covered in blood as it's digging into his stomach, and I didn't find any magic rings. That's disappointing. Yeah. Spend all that time digging around in its gut and you Can didn't I find s- anything. Skin the bear and sell its pelt. Ooh, um, I know there's no rule for this because I looked through the skills and I didn't see anything like this in nature or survival. I think so, it have to be survival though. I am gonna make yep. It is gonna be a survival roll, and I have a DC in mind for it. Oh, you're actually letting me roll for this? I yeah. I was somewhat joking, but I'll do it. Hell yeah, no. Get skin that bear. I don't have a knife. Oh, you can't skin. Here, use my warhammer. <laughs> no, a star you... knife could you precisely cut it around with a star knife let me try uh, <laughs> hold on hold on what kind of weapon is it a martial weapon oh yeah it would be martial and it's uh... metal so never mind don't touch it i don't want you to lose your <laughs> druidness hold on hold on <laughs> let me go back to the druid bit with ted here does it you can't have anything metal at all i think it's just uh, metal armor i'm pretty sure it's metal armor 25 roll the 18 and i have a plus seven in survival god damn <laughs> Yeah, you are absolutely able to do so. You got to take the time to do it. It'll probably take you about an hour to properly skin the bear. Cool with that. What does everybody else do while... uh... Hunt for more bears! (laughs) No. No. I'm pretty sure we would be harvesting the... uh... The rosemary in the meantime? Rosemary. All right, all right. So Vorn skins the bear. He's taking his time. He's being really precise with it, and it's, it's, it's coming off perfectly. When he he's uh, skinning the bear, you guys are able to successfully gather. Uh, there's a ton of rosemary here. I mean, the bear did trample one of the rosemary bushes, but you easily could gather an entire satchel, so like a sack filled with rosemary. 
We do so. Those All horses right. are going to be so not itchy. They're going to be so grateful. Let's Nick, head back. Nick Nick wants to wear this uh, this bear pelt on his head. Man, I was I was, was going to wear it. Hey, you it's, bigger, in, than, so I guess, it's you, bigger than you are. You can't wear that. I think that, that, that's like, why. That would be why it's so funny. There's this comically oversized bear pelt on his head. <laughs> you drag like an eight foot bear train following you at constantly. Born actually wants to see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on you. <laughs> Still all just bloody and gross. Say, if you're not going to wash it or treat it first, just slap it on the goblin. I don't think either one of us would care. Born and Miklik. Have you seen what Miklik looks like right now? He's don't covered go. in blood already. <laughs> yeah. The bear's blood and okay. his own. <laughs> then I guess. Do you guys go back to town after this? Yeah, we, we'll go back to Etrin's Folly and uh, deliver the rosemary to the horse uh, and run. Thanks for joining us here on the MinMax Podcast as we play The Fall of Plaguestone and Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Most of the sounds you heard in today's episode were provided by Sirenscape. Check them out at Sirenscape.com. You can find MinMax on just about any podcast distribution site and social media at M-N-M-A-X-E-D. That's MinMaxed. Join us next week as we continue our adventures. And until then, we hope you have many of your own.